Jeez, do you think it's been three years since Thunderfoot busted Spin Launch? Not just once, but twice. And of course, ever since those three years ago, nothing has happened when it comes to Spin Launch because lo and behold, Thunderfoot was right yet again. Who could have seen that one coming? Oh wait, people don't actually understand this type of stuff. With that said, in comes this guy four days ago. He unintentionally busted spin launch without actually knowing he busted spin launch. So let's go in to see why he actually unintentionally busted spin launch. Uh-oh. It shouldn't be doing that. Spin launch is supposed to shoot satellites into orbit. Last thing you want is the rocket that is shooting your uh, satellite into orbit to be spinning like that. The amount of G-forces introduced into the satellite will destroy it because satellites are delicate, cre tele delicately designed pieces of technology. The last thing you want is the rocket to be spinning like that, destroying not just the rocket itself, but the satellite inside. And again, Thunderfoot busted this long ago, three years ago. But either way, let's go to that point of where uh, he was talking about the spinning issue. So let's see. Here we go. Again, this is from three years ago. The tip of the missile to be the same as the exit point of the back of the missile. So the front of the missile exits there. And the back exits in exactly the same... Oh, the back doesn't exit in the same place. In fact, the back exits, like, hugely off. Like, um, uh, what? It's got, a, like, a 30-degree twist on this or something. Now, obviously, you should know full well why having a spin like that is not a good thing. And if you don't understand, there ain't much I can do for you, buddy. I'll be putting all the videos, this both Thunderfoot's and his, in the description below. I would suggest watching Thunderfoot's video first because it gives you the actual context of everything, but still. So, obviously, we don't want the rocket to be spinning like that. So, this is a smaller version, running about 400 revolutions a second. So the G-loading really isn't that crazy, and you ain't going to be launching a satellite with this pile of crap anytime soon. So let's now go to the real one and talk a little bit of science. Now obviously I'm going to be uh, mulling off a Thunderfoot, but whatever. So let's now go to the real spin launch. The real spin launch is generally going to be around 20,000 Gs, 20, Gs. And that's not just a uh, for a very short time. They said, sp spin launch said, for about an hour or so, it will be spinning up getting energy and as it's doing that it'll be doing it for one hour and obviously it's going to pile up apparently to around 2000 g's uh, last i checked a very delicate satellite does not like that type of g load especially one for an hour so let's just uh, talk so that's issue number one next to obviously the rocket itself spinning like an idiot so, not just the 20 G loads, but then also the G loads introduced by the rocket spinning and tumbling like that after launch. The whole thing will just shred itself out of, out of existence. It will make the explosions at uh, the stupid corn silo from Muskrat look tame in comparison to what this thing does when it, when it, releases, when it, releases, when it leaves the super launch arm. Now, you may be wondering... Why is Thunderfoot also bringing up the G-loading for a battleship gun? Well, turns out what Spin, what spin Launch is doing is basically piggybacking off a already uh, done concept from 50 years ago. This one right here to be more precise, Harp. This right here and why he's bringing it up is because these are two battleship guns sought welded together. And of course the G-loading on that is still pretty high. 50, 15,000 G's, but instead for an hour of two of 2,000 G or 20,000 G's for spin launch, is 15,000 G's for basically a fraction of a second. 
Now you may be wondering, okay, delicate satellite and everything else. Well, it's a little more easier to work with with something like a harp than with spin launch. Placing point right here, they did this for, for nuclear bombs. So let's watch a little bit of Thunderfoot's video again. Millisecond, microsecond, that sort of thing, timing in order for a plutonium implosion device to function properly. Uh, fairly sensitive stuff. Yet the US military devised a version of this that could be fired from a cannon. So yes, can sensitive uh, equipment and whatnot handle geloads like that? Yes, but only for split seconds. Not for the hour or so spin launch takes to get to proper speed to launch it out of its little tube. And then on top of that, when it does eventually launch, it's going to be spinning like a fucking idiot. And another thing, this guy right here, if I can get a little bit of a better shot. This one's not even in a vacuum. This is just dead air going through all... This is There's no vacuum on this or anything. So... Let's get into uh, that for a quick sec. Right, it's not going to be that long because it's pretty because it's pretty easy to bust on this. Give me a quick sec. So the uh, supposed uh, spin launch thing is about the size of the Statue of Liberty. Uh, good luck vacuuming that sucker down, especially with the non-sealed bearings and everything else. You ain't getting a vacuum on this pile of shit. Of course, I'm not going to get into all this because Thunderfoot already busted this thing three three years ago. I just want to uh, boy, I just want to make my own little short video that maybe get like 100 views or so, and kind of make fun of a tech bro YouTuber that made this thing, and again, unironically busted spin launch. So I give you kudos there, buddy. You unironically busted spin launch without actually knowing you busted spin launch. So. uh... Good job on uh, proving Thunderfoot right, yet again. Eh, sucks to suck, I guess. But then again, tech bros aren't that smart, unfortunately.